Welcome to Made for Mondays, the source for digging a little deeper into the Believer's Church Sunday messages and finding ways to apply them to our daily lives. Together, let's take a deeper look and find a way to bring Mondays back to life. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the pod. My name is Heather. Who are you, fellas? Wow. Sounds so different. <laughs> 192 episodes. And we're like, we're just not going to wear headphones. <laughs> you can't talk about this until you at least say who you are. Hey, Heather. Sam's it's here. me, Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> the boys are grumpy today because I asked the question of yep. our producer, why, Jeremy, do we have to wear headphones? I know that we're 192 episodes in. It just, I've had it on my mind a couple of times, but I just forget so to ask. So since 190. So I, yeah. So I asked <laughs> and got something? an answer <laughs> that we don't need to wear them. Uh. So I said, I'm not wearing them and that you guys could, if you want to wear them, go ahead. Sure. Jamie says, <laughs> we have to all wear them or all we Yeah, we I think it would not. look really weird if it one of us. It looks really was... weird to wear them. <laughs> it's... Period. <laughs> it's fine. I know it's fine. Sam we'll felt like it was it was more professional. Yeah. I think people well, watching are like, why are they wearing headphones? Well, I will say you brought up the whole when she sings the the um What the what? Yeah, what the what. Which At least that's like that should died. be a lot less. Yeah. <laughs> nobody cares anymore. Yeah, nobody's submitting. I wonder anything. what killed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, we'll never know. <laughs> it's a mystery. <laughs> I think uh, everyone's just spoken. gotten to a place of spiritual maturity yeah, where they don't have questions everything. anymore. No more questions. <laughs> no, that's probably it. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so today is an important day. Yeah, it's 192nd episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's important. also James Vernon Stewart's birthday. Yes. It is. <clears throat> James Vernon. Yeah. Uh, birthday. Yep. Yeah, it's my birthday. Can't believe I have to work on my birthday. <laughs> But you can take your birthday off. I know. Yeah, it's a floating holiday. I'll yeah. take it yeah. later. I'm yeah. sure you yeah. will. I'll take it some other time. <laughs> but yeah. you enjoyed birthday celebrations this weekend. I did. It was super what nice. What did you guys do? So I took the day off of Lent. That was fun. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. So that was really good. Had some sinning to do. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my whole thing on Lent, in case someone's judging me now because I just oh, took, said I took the day off I mean, there the are people of judging it. you, even if this wasn't yeah. happening. Yeah. So Elmer Towns, co-founder of Liberty University, mm-hmm. who's written books on fasting. The cutest little old man there ever he was. He really is. <laughs> Years ago, I was at a coaching session with Nelson, and he was there, and he was talking about fasting. And he said, it doesn't really matter you know, what you do when you fast, just whatever you do, agree, like make an agreement going into your fast of what you will do and then follow through on it. So like if you know your anniversary is going to fall in the middle of your fast, then you just say, I'm going to fast except for on our anniversary. Mm-hmm. So that way it's not like, oh, well, I can't fast because my birthday, my birthday falls during Lent yeah. every year. So <laughs> I'm not going to ever sell, you know, I'm never going to participate in Lent. Rather, just agree going yeah. into Lent, my birthday falls, I'm going to take the day off. So that's what I did. So had steak, mm. scallops, roasted veggies, risotto, wow, ice cream pie. Know. What a feast. Does your body hold up all right? Yeah, I gained a couple pounds. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it yeah. didn't revolt. That's shocking all <laughs> No, it did not revolt. <laughs> okay, good. No, that's good. no. And I didn't overdo it. It was the only meal I ate that day, so I still... Didn't overdo it. Yeah. Um, and it was it was just fabulous. It was really fun. Yeah. Had kids over. And Uncle Eddie's last Esther hurrah. came over. My uncle, my 98-year-old uncle is getting ready to move to Florida, which I'm very sad about, but I know yeah. it's the right decision for him. Um, so, yeah, he's got a couple more weeks. His daughter's coming into town today and helping him figure out yeah. what he's taking to Florida with him. And so, yeah, so this was kind of the last... Hoorah with him, and it was just so sweet. I I love him so much, and it was yeah. really good to have him. Yeah. And you probably, didn't get Chuck E. Cheese pizza for him? I did not, no. To. <laughs> he probably wouldn't have wanted uh, to get it himself. That, that was all my <laughs> aunt. <laughs> yeah, that was all my aunt. Did you get any gifts? Um, I got some cards and, yeah. Yeah, I know. It's so weird at this at this point in life. You're just like, yeah. I mean, Whatever. and I Thanks. literally don't need a thing. So right. yeah, I I don't. Just w- a pause from Lent. 
Yeah, that was, that was perfect in itself. Hang out it was family. perfect. Hang out yep. with family. Good. Yeah, yeah. Esther, uh, she loved some ice cream pie. Oh, I bet she did. Oh my goodness! So she'd <laughs> been. Bonnie bought this little like. It looks like a ginormous pacifier, mm-hmm. but you stick like yeah. frozen fruit and stuff right. in it, and, and she can chomp on it, it and yeah. she's teething, so it feels good to her gums. And she loves that thing. So Bonnie, th- over through the course of the evening, she had blueberries, she had grapes, you know, she loved, loved, loved. Then she got a taste of ice cream pie, and that <laughs> thing was like, yeah, that is disgusting. <laughs> Where's my pie? She was... <laughs> she loved it. So That's yeah, awesome. it was super fun. So Emma shares a birthday. Yes, we have with a lot Jamie. of March fourth birthdays. Yeah. So yeah. my Emma, she's ten today. Yep. Crazy. Yep. You're that wearing a crazy. you're wearing a New York City shirt. Did you wear I that? am. I'm wearing I got this from, from Journey the Church. Leadership board thing sent this, to you? this nice. last week. Yeah, I sit on the board of directors for Journey Church and they occasionally send me swag. That's amazing. <laughs> so I got a, a nice journey hoodie. So we, um, we've had this thing. Well, we started with, with Addie when she turned 10, our oldest, um, and took oh, her. Oh, Oh, yeah. I had we a conversation with Yeah, she's not happy about it. The, <laughs> she got to sleep on her trips, aunt's couch. <laughs> the trips have tent. gotten better. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. In Columbus. As and life said, goes on. I said, Columbus is a great place. She it said, is great. I'd been there before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she, okay, so... Uh, for those listening, so we did, um, if you can hear me, um, still still trying to get used to this headphone thing. Um, you we don't do, speak into headphones. You we do a ten. We do a ten year birthday when they turn ten years old. We take them somewhere special, and it's more special than other birthdays. So mm-hmm. we plan it out. All these things. Um, Addison got to take a friend with her. Oh. But we went to Columbus, yeah. <laughs> and we did fun, and we did fun things there, fly. and we did yeah. drive there. <laughs> she, um, she made sure I knew that. Too. Never yeah. thought she would remember. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she At remembers. Um, yeah. Mason, she'll she'll need therapy for yes, that later. Mason, but... she'll need therapy for a lot of things. She's the firstborn, so it <laughs> right. is what it is. Um, Mason, a couple of years later, he or a couple of years ago, we. He just got to go to Miami. <laughs> Not a big deal. Right. Just and a little, little trip to Miami. A Browns game. <laughs> a Browns game there, yeah. Well, yeah. I had to, get to go to a Buckeyes game, but it was it was like 100 degrees out. <laughs> Tickets were $5 each <laughs> at the horseshoe. We were like all the way up. It was yeah. great. But she had fun. She had fun. She won't admit it. <laughs> so we did that with Mason. And then Emma. Emma's not a sports person at all. And Addie's a big sports person. So that was that thing. So Emma... This was all my wife's planning because I didn't know what was going to do. And honestly, like, I'll be, I will be honest, I was not looking forward to this trip that much. Really? Just because I knew it was going to be a lot of girly things. I love Emma, but it was like, she, we just don't have a lot in common, which is fine. Yeah. I'm still her dad, but it is what it is. <laughs> we had an absolute blast. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So we went and we took her to New York City. Um, I thought we went to a whole bunch of different boroughs, but we didn't. We just stayed in Manhattan. But okay. it's just like it's so mad. I mean, there. Yeah. The, I I might have been. I was made for that place. Yeah, we you probably about, walked about ten miles. Oh gosh. Yeah. In one day, I mean, oh, I got. I have so much to tell you, so I'll try to keep it brief because not everybody wants to hear about this. But um, we it we walked so many places, but just like my road rage. I was built for the city. Yeah. <laughs> you can be like, yeah. you can ignore people. Oh, yeah. You, you can fact, push you by. Should, you, should you should ignore, ignore people. people. Yeah. It was amazing. I'm not going to lie. I'm made for the city life uh, also. Yeah. I, I miss it so much. Right. From the, the moment we we um, we flew into Newark and then we took the um, the train into yep. the city. Yep. So we were like, I mean, we were like locals. Oh, we knew yeah. exactly what we were doing. Right. Um, got into the city, into Penn Station and come up. And as soon as I hit the street, I've been to, I've been to New York. Quite a few times, yeah. but it's been a while. As soon as I hit the street, I was like, this is me. Yeah. Just, I mean, and we we were just pushing through people. Mm-hmm. Get out of my way. It was awesome. <laughs> I can't do a Brooklyn accent, but it'd be amazing <laughs> if I could. Um, so we did, we just, Jamie had a whole weekend playing with her, but we did. We we walked. Well, you got to at least tell the Times Square story because that's yes, okay, incredible. Yes, okay, yeah. So um, how do you do that? Her top, th- I know, her <clears throat> top three, Emma's top three experiences were one, we went and saw Wicked. And again, I wasn't like super. I'm not a huge musical guy. I know Wicked was really great, though. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know part of my job is music stuff, but I just never really been into the theater. And so, even going to this thing, I'd only been to one Broadway show before. What was the one you'd been to before? 
Do you Chicago. Remember? Oh, oh, right. I don't okay. know if I was. Gonna, we might have to cut that out, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have said that if I had headphones on. Thanks, Heather. Um, <laughs> that was back in my early days. Yeah. You know, I was very yeah. mature. Um, but anyway, so that one, it was like super, super tight. And like I got, it was like sick because it was so hot in there. So I was not looking forward to this Wicked show at all. The two main actresses, or I think that's what you call them, they were unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, just belting out notes, and I don't hear one wrong note. And it, the story—I didn't know the story at all, other yeah, than I knew it was the great. wicked. It's yeah. fun. Um, uh, which it was—it was so good. I saw that here in Norfolk. When yeah. they, okay, when they so went yeah, so Jamie, she had went to Norfolk and saw it. Yeah. So I was asking her what's the difference. She's like, I mean, just it—they did Production. a really good job oh, in sure. Norfolk, but yeah. like when you're here, I mean, oh, it was I'm just, sure. Yeah. So that was like a three-hour show. Yeah. We had a blast, got back and, and slept. The next day, it poured rain all day on Saturday in New York. All day. I mean, we were we were soaked, but like we had stuff to do, so we did a carriage yeah. ride yeah. at Central Park, pouring rain. But yep. we got out and took <clears throat> pictures, and it is what it is. Um, and then, you know, fast forward, we did like dinner, and we hung out. There's a place called Serendipity. Uh-huh. You've heard it's of this? so fun. I guess it's from a movie, too, but it's they do these like massive... Hot cho- frozen hot chocolate sundays. Oh, nice! I mean, it was small fortune. I had to take a loan yeah. out just, uh-huh. to, but it was amazing. And it's like kind of like a quirky little place okay. too. Yes. Like you feel like you're in Alice in Wonderland. Okay. Yeah, kind of like it's candy so shop fun. vibes, yeah. okay. kind of thing. Like, yeah, just it was it was really cool. So we did that, and then um, it finally stopped raining at like eight o'clock. Finally, um, we were pretty good with the subway. Yeah. Um, New York just came out. With, I don't know if they just came out with it, but it was new to us. Um, they have an app. And so you put where you want to go and it tells you exactly like you walk this, you walk oh, here to the nice. subway and it's like yeah. a built in GPS into the app. Right. You walk to the subway. This is what you get on. Take the R train to Brooklyn yeah. and Queens. Get off at this exit. Because it's easy to get oh my on gosh. and go yeah. start yes. off in the wrong direction. So we only did that. <laughs> yeah, We only did that one time. Yeah. And that's when we had to be at Serendipity and you have to be there for. Like An the appointment, right, right yes. reservation. Right. And so we're like, we're within minutes. We get off the subway. We're at the wrong station. It says 20 minutes. And we only, we have 20 minutes. Like, it's 20 right. minutes to our reservation. We walked. Oh, my gosh. Pouring rain. We get into that place just soaked. And we're like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> we have reservations. Uh, but that was amazing. And then after that, we come back to Times Square. And this was her favorite thing. Jamie found this on Instagram. I was like... You know, all of the video yeah. walls in Times Square, which is really cool. Um, and there's like humongous ones and then there's like smaller ones. Yep. So I was thinking it's going to be this like small one. And Jamie's telling me, get your phone ready. So she had reserved 15 seconds on this video wall. That's incredible. And so we were trying to like position Emma so we could get a picture with it and she could be surprised. So we're standing there. She's like, they sent me a text. They said it's like any minute now. And all of a sudden, the biggest, the biggest um, LED wall in, in Times Square, right by the steps going up. I mean, I, I, was, Emma. I knew it was going to happen and I was shocked. I was like, oh my. I know it's a huge one. Yeah. And so we're trying to like, I'm trying to get a video, but Emma's looking. Our, Emma can't find her. Emma can't see it, which if you know Emma, it's classic. So for the first seven seconds, she doesn't even see it. So I finally like have to take her face and like point it up to the, sorry, Jeremy, point it up to the big, huge screen. And she was like, she was so embarrassed, but like she started crying. It was, oh, that's awesome. it was amazing. That's so. incredible. I, I, didn't know that that was a thing. I, I had no so idea cool. either. And so I, when we were there, I knew that she was doing it. So there was like a smaller video wall that was like families, like yeah. family trips. And it, that was constantly going with stuff. Yep. Emma's the only one I saw that hit the humongous screen. So wow. I don't know so if people great. just don't know. It's a different place. So. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, if you're going to New York for a surprise, whatever, let me know. And I'll tell Jamie she can give you the yeah. link to it. Yeah, that's so um, cool. So yeah, we had a blast. And yesterday we were exhausted, but our flight wasn't until late. So we we tried to hoof it around the city again. And by like three o'clock, I was like, let's just go to the airport. So we went to the airport and sat there for like six hours and just rested <laughs> our feet. So yeah. it was, we had a blast. And I'm, I'm a big New York City fan again. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah, it was pretty I cool. I love it so much. Very good. So we had Mason and Addie stay right. with us yeah. while they were gone. And we had a very full weekend. You guys did a ton. Um, but probably the most notable is oh, that. Right. We took Mason to his very last basketball game. Oh, the Raiders. The game did go on without (laughs) the coach? Apparently. Wow. Oh, Jamie, not only did it go on. Did they win? They won. 
maybe the coach was the problem. We've been discussing that That's possibility all week. Yeah, that is one possibility. That is a possibility. <laughs> they... did, the, did that parent that you called out coach? No. No. Because <laughs> that would have been, been epic. That would have been so great. My assistant coach. Yeah. And, you know, was I feeling bad that they won and I wasn't there? Did I think... Was I the problem this whole time? <laughs> yeah, it may have crossed my brain. Yeah. But as the great proverb in leadership oh. quotes normally say, okay, a true leader and coach, his greatness is only shown when they are absent. Oh, that uh. was the longest, most painful. I'm not done. <laughs> I'm not done. <laughs> and while you absent, know what you're still in the hearts. <laughs> yeah. Of their players uh-huh. oh. and their fans. I'm not done. <laughs> and also <laughs> can bring you to victory. Mm. Oh, man. Proverb. <laughs> That's your proverb? It's in there. Okay. You can find it. Oh, Proverbs. in the Bible. <laughs> Proverbs uh, 33. Uh, uh, it's it's a cool yeah. proverb. Proverbs okay. 33, oh, verse, right, right. message version. Verse 7 through <laughs> 12. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, so that was pretty... Awesome. Yeah, that is but awesome. Mason had a great game. I told Mason this. So Mason, they won without Emma. I know yeah. Emma was like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> so we're getting live updates of this game, and we're like, Emma, your team's winning, and she's like, I'm gonna feel real bad if they win and I'm not there because obviously I'm like the, <laughs> I'd be the reason that I, that they win <laughs> or lose. And I was like, that's uh, not it, Emma. And I'm in the same boat as you. <laughs> So before the game, we're like getting, we had been doing some other stuff. We're getting ready. And, oh, this was at lunch. Mason was like, guys, I think I'm just, I'm going into this thing and I'm going to, just going to play the best game I've ever played in my life. Way to go, Mason. I mean, it's our last game. Yeah. I'm not going to leave anything on the table. Yeah. Like, where'd he I'm, go? I I'm going he gave all a pep in. talk to the team at halftime. <laughs> I <Yeah>. love that. <laughs> he was so cute. And yeah. I was like, I, Mason, this is a great attitude to have yes. going into this game. He was like, I mean, we're probably, we might not win, but yeah. I'm going to do the best I can so that yep. we at least maybe can. Yeah. And then they won, and they it won. was grand. I mean, Red Raiders win. Yep. LeBron enters 40, the 40,000 40, point mark. Yeah, mark. No big deal. It's just because he played forever. That's why. <laughs> well, yeah. That's the only reason. Yeah. I mean, when you're 90. Yeah. And you're still <laughs> right. playing ball. You yeah. better hit some scoring yeah, records. Better, yeah, you better get it. And then, uh, what's her name? Is the last name Clark? The, yes. yes. Yeah. She Caitlin. won Caitlin the. Clark. She hit the all-time yep. NCAA yes. point record for men's or women's, which is pretty incredible. Yes. That's, amazing. That's Wild. pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. awesome. So yeah, all these amazing sports things happening this weekend. There was. Um, you you might have read about that in the fourteen forty this morning. I did. Yeah. Also in the 1440 this morning was an article about this um, Willy Wonka experience that Mm -hmm. was supposed to be like you pay for it and you feel like you're in like Wonka land by going. And people are very upset because actually when going, all that they received after paying for this event was like a half a cup of lemonade and two jelly beans per person. Oh. Wow. <laughs> so there's it's like this, a museum? <clears throat> I guess. It's in I think it was said it was in Scotland. Oh, okay. So no so, chocolate rivers or right, anything. Right. Like it's yeah. like nothing like uh-huh. it was depicted to be. Yeah. Which I sent it to Nate because this weekend with the kids, I had found this event that was happening um at the Portsmouth Cultural Center or yeah. Center for the Arts or something like that. And um, it was a, it's called Blow Up, and it was an art installation of, like, huge um, inflatables. And so, like, these artists would make (laughs) these inflatable things, and they had them on display. And so Uh I was like, oh, that would be, like, super fun to go see, something different to do or whatever. So we get there Saturday morning, and I've already told them, like, I don't know what this is going to be like. So if we're bored and don't want to stay, it's not a big deal. We'll just leave. They're like, yeah, okay, cool. So we all go. It's rainy here, too, mm-hmm. on Saturday. So we park down by the Children's Museum. We have to walk up to the to this building. It was like a, a little over a block. So we get up there. We're kind of wet. We step inside, and the guy's like, oh, are you here for our exhibit? 
And it's like, yeah, we're super excited about it. He was like, oh, yeah, it's great. And blah, blah, blah. It's $3 a person. I was like, awesome. So pay. He's like, yeah, when you get up there, just like take it all in. You know, he's like, I was like, yeah, we that's our plan. We're going to do that. So we walk up the stairs. There's a bucket like at the top of the stairs and rain is just like dripping into this thing. (laughs) And Addie goes, this might be a sign. (laughs) I was like, I'm getting that feeling too, Addie. They might should charge more than $3 if they've got building repairs. (laughs) Just just wait. So we take a turn. Uh You can kind of see some of the inflatables. So we take a turn. Some of the works. Yeah, to walk in. This space is not any bigger than... It's smaller than our open office area. Okay. And there are six. <laughs> inflatables. Six <laughs> inflatables. In, in there? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So we, like, walk in. You can't, you can't even, like, see all six of them in, like, order. So we go to the. Inflatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We go to the left. We walk out, see three. And we're like, okay, I guess we, so we come back out here. We go to the right. See three more, and then we're all looking for a door. Like, sure, there's another like, par- there's portion a, yeah, of it. Yeah, like you go to yeah. the Chrysler Museum, there yeah. exhibits in all sorts of different well, rooms. Well, yeah, there's probably 10 rooms like this. <laughs> right. Yeah. How great were they? <laughs> Not great. <laughs> so <laughs> we like walk, trying to find, I was like, guys, I, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, that's, that's it. Awesome. Two of the inflatables so it were took like all of about five minutes. No, not even. <laughs> I've decided that we paid houses. three minutes per three dollars per minute is uh-huh. what we ended up paying. Um, <laughs> two of them were these huge flamingos, like like the rafts you see, like in pools oh, nice. and stuff. I was like, that yeah. that could be in a, that could be in our they pool. Got, uh, Walmart. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh my god! That's amazing. So we, that is amazing. Then yeah. we walked back downstairs, and the guy was like trying his best. I mean, so he was like, "Oh, we have coffee and cookies in this room over here," and I was like, yeah, "Okay, thanks. thanks." So we like walk in there. There's like probably twenty chairs sat like in a circle, like you would just sit down in a circle with a bunch of people. <laughs> And then this little an table A-meme. with so it was like that. For later. <laughs> it was little table with like a few cookies yeah. and a push pot of coffee. Mm-hmm. And so I like walk in and he's like on our heels walking <laughs> in behind us. And he was like, hover much? <laughs> so we get in and I was like, oh, okay. I think we're just going to pass on this. <laughs> Uh, so we start walking out. Nate goes over and gets a cup of coffee. I think he just he felt bad. I was like, "This is no. I don't need to." Uh, that's amazing. And I said th- that that was really um, different. I was expecting a lot more than that. He was like, "Well, it's kind of a small room." And I was like, <laughs> "Then maybe we shouldn't host a playable yeah. exhibit." Uh, oh, it was funny. That sounds so good. <laughs> Hey, I missed it. Yeah. It's probably moved on by now. It's <laughs> no, gone, no. It's gone it's to still, another it's museum. Still here. Yeah, it's, it's you here, can find like, it. We'll put it in the details. Through of the, the show. end of March, yeah. I think. Oh, check the notes section. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. As we're walking <laughs> outside, there's like a few more families going in. Nate was like, Should we warn them? And I was like, No. no they Everyone gotta, they gotta experience it's this. It's not their own. like they're losing a lot. No. Right. I mean, three exactly. bucks. Yeah. yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. We did the um we did the wax museum where it's like celebrities. Yeah. Oh my gosh! If you want to see amazing pictures, we, it was so funny. <laughs> That's awesome because <laughs> we couldn't see any celebrities uh, there, so we went to the right. wax museum. Mm-hmm. There you go. Pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, big fun weekend had by all. Yes. Um, we also are now into a new chapter in our Bible reading challenge. We are. We just started yep. Mark twelve. Yep. So, anything from last week stick out to y'all, or from today's reading? Um. So I do love the, of course I do because all I talk about is money, but I love the last section of Mm -hmm. Mark 12 where the widow gives the might Mm -hmm. and Jesus uses that as the example of generosity. Mm -hmm. I just think it's, it's such a great, it's such a great picture. You don't love the first story? (laughs) <laughs> the first um, parable. What was the first? <laughs> just continues to send, oh, just send people to die. Getting people <laughs> beaten up and dying. Uh, and that's a great Jesus juke, though. It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I mean, it, that's the definition. <laughs> right. Yeah, he had them. Yeah, he did have them, yeah. and they all knew that they were that yeah. he was talking yeah. about them. And he which... keeps getting them all the way through the chapter too. It's They're so just like, true. All right, we got nothing else. To say. <laughs> that's what I was like. I wrote down just 
the especially in this chapter, I think, I mean, we see it throughout the Gospels in their entirety, but just the constant trying to trap Jesus, yeah. like mm-hmm. trying to like and get he, him caught in and something. And he outwits them and every time. every time he just like turns it right yeah. back on him. Yep. But like in a very um, like calm sort of way for the most part, like it, it's not aggressive in the way that we see that yeah. playing out in our... Although like the end of last week's reading was um, he asked them, did John come from God? Yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever. And they're like talking it over. You know, He's if like, we, well, then if we say, him. yeah, then <laughs> then I'm not answering yeah. your question either. <laughs> if you can't answer, <laughs> then true. I'm not answering. Yeah. yeah. I that, mean, that strikes me as funny. Yeah. It's yeah. almost passive. Oh, I think Jesus is funny a lot. Oh, yeah. But almost passive aggressive. Uh-huh. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> and so I'm going to have a lot of stories on this, but of course, there were like the street preachers and just screaming in New York City. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I mean, obviously, it is what, like, they're just, there's no, there's no appealing to them. There's no, like, you know, hey, let's have a calm conversation no. and discuss this. But everything I read, especially in our readings right now, like, Jesus just never approached yeah, it that way. Right. No. So I just, I don't understand where the confusion of that comes in. Well, but. I mean, but isn't New York really, I mean, it's it's become because of probably because of that like it's become such a bastion of christianity oh, yeah. oh yes yeah i was so, i mean it's yeah. yeah it's on fire there <laughs> you can really right. feel the holy spirit when oh, you walk yeah, through I'm times sure. <laughs> Thank, thanks to those guys yeah, yeah it's really <laughs> great really, it is yeah. great well this week we started our new series called pray yeah and oh my gosh what a great kickoff to this series i'm so excited good. for this conversation today but before we get into what started yesterday, um, what are some of the results that you guys are hoping we individuals and collectively experience by the end of this series? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I kind of laid it out a little bit yesterday, but, you know, kind of my hope is wherever wherever a person is on the continuum of how they feel about prayer, even if they're feeling like super skeptical about prayer, that they would just embrace their skepticism mm-hmm. and try it anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, my, my whole thing is just uh, I would love for people who've given up on the idea of prayer I w- to, to try again, to mm-hmm. wade into it again. Uh, I would love people who are passionate about their prayer life to, to expand on that and maybe even – pass on some of their, you know, their passion to mm-hmm. others for prayer. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I just hope – and even for me, like I, I told, you know, several highs and low kind of stories yesterday. Um, but prayer is one of those things that like it's just – I was talking to Les yesterday. Yeah, on my the, father-in-law. Yeah, Nate's dad on the way out yesterday. And he said, you know, like my whole thing on prayer has always been like I don't get it. Yeah. And that's kind of how I am. Like, I, re- I could tell great stories. I could tell terrible mm-hmm. stories. What's the difference between them? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, why do sometimes prayers seem to get traction and other times? I don't, I really don't know. Um, so I, for me, like, I know I struggle with it and I just want to, I want to embrace the struggle a little more yeah. as, well, as a result of I this I mean, series. it's what you're saying. Like, it can be confusing, too. And uh, yeah. you, re- you read the message a few weeks back in our worship planning. And so I've been thinking about that and uh, another New York story. So we went to the massive cath- cathedral there. I can't mm-hmm. remember the name of it. Um, St. Patrick's? It might be, It might have been. Gosh, I can't remember. Anyway, so it's humongous. I mean, it's beautiful. You walk in. It, it's very touristy. So, like, people are walking through. And, like, at first I had, like, a bad – I was like, there's just – Jesus be flipping tables in here, that kind of thing. But then as you, like, walk around this church, um, there were people, like, in heavy prayer. Sure. But then there's people, like, just watching. And I was sure. like, man, what a great yep. example of, of how people view prayer. Some people yeah. are, like, really, really into it, and they're, like, they full-on believe it. And then other people are just kind of watching, like, is this real? Is it not yeah. real? Yeah. Like, very skeptic. So after you read your message, I think for me, it's like, I just, I just want it to be real. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. 
it's a it's a wrestling match. Like it, it, it is, is real. You're, you're either you just you need it. You need God to show up, or you're just kind of fighting. Like, is this even is he even listening? Mm-hmm. But it's kind of just like that that struggle back and forth. Yeah. So that's why I appreciated your message yesterday, even though I wasn't here. I heard it. Yeah. Um, because it was just it was real. Like it was it wasn't just like yeah, yeah. pray mm-hmm. and everything's gonna be great. Yeah. Like right. those kind of things. So yeah. So you said it was loosely based on the book. By yeah. Tyler Stanton, praying like monks, living like fools. Yeah. So, how did you get introduced <laughs> to the book, and what, why do yeah. you think it's a good backdrop for this? I don't remember series? how I got introduced to the book. I remember um, it came out, and Doug and I both decided to pick it up and read it. I think Doug's B group is actually studying it now, and I know uh, one of the men's group Monday or Tuesday. I think it's Monday's Monday men's group. They're picking up the study for that. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I think maybe I saw, I think I think that's what it was probably. I saw him interviewed, and oh, I think okay. it was interview interview with Carrie Newhoff. Um, and I remember, so it, it, I've seen a bunch now since the book has come out. I've seen a bunch of Tyler Stanton stuff, and he always looks homeless. <laughs> He's, he, he looks like a homeless guy. He's pastor in this church. He was in he was in Brooklyn. Uh-huh. He started a church in Brooklyn, and I now well. now he's out in. <laughs> you didn't go there. Is it Portland so. that, yeah, that they're in? So. I think so. Anyway, up up that direction, maybe Seattle, whatever it is. Um, uh, Bridge Bridgetown, mm-hmm. right? Um, but the interview, I remember th- like when I first started watching the interview, I was like, oh man, this guy, like playing the part of that that you know. In my mind, this is what I'm yeah. thinking, you know, like trying to identify with this, you yeah. know, hippie vibe hippie generation culture, yeah. thing, you know, like this, you know, kind of rolling my mm-hmm. eyes. But then as I'm listening to the interview, I'm like, man, this is pretty solid. And then Carrie says something like, um, you know, like, where do you get like some like some of the stuff that you wrote in your book, like. As I'm reading it, I'm thinking this has to be written by a 60 year old seasoned saint. Like, where yeah. did some of this stuff come from? And so, and he's young, you know, he's a, he's a young guy, and that intrigued me. Like, Carrie's talking about like there's just so much depth and wisdom yeah. in mm-hmm. this book, and you're such a young guy. Like, how does that happen? And he just started talking about like the breadth of what he reads, and that's really where a lot of it came from. And it just so intrigued me that I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna pick it up. And yeah. it was just such a good book. And a couple friends and I read it together and met for coffee a couple times uh, during the course of the reading just to, to debrief on it. Just a, just such an excellent read. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's kind of how I stumbled onto it. And, um, yeah, I, I kind of initially was saying, like, the book, the series is based on the book, but it's not really – um, it's more loosely inspired by the book, mm-hmm. and and I did pull a couple quotes out of it. Our big idea was a quote from the book, um, but yeah, I highly recommend it. But I also mentioned a couple other books on yeah. prayer yesterday yeah. that are also you know worthwhile reads. So. Yeah, well, we'll get into that in just a second. Yeah. And you went because you went over a couple of kind of polar opposite words that yeah. people kind of come to mind when people hear the word or think of prayer. So one of those was guilt. Yeah, and and for that one, just by the way, almost everyone who's given me feedback, it was either guilt or disappointment yeah. that mm-hmm. they resonated the mm-hmm. most with. Right. Um, and I think a lot of, and I think churches have done a disservice because of what you just said. You know, like so many sermons on prayer is are like you just ought to. Do it better, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know. And yeah, so they if beat if you're you up. Better, then it'll be answered. Yeah, yeah they beat you up for not doing it right, right, or not doing it long enough, or not doing it consistently mm-hmm. enough. And so a lot of people just feel guilty yeah. when it comes to prayer. Yeah, right. yeah. So the opposite word of that set of words that you talked about was inspired. Yeah, and you brought up um, Circle Maker, yeah. which is Mark Batterson's book, and you talked a little bit about that. And that really was inspirational was. to our staff and yeah. our church family back in the day when we were coming here. I don't even know how long ago that we did that series, but yeah, it's, uh, it's such a good... But we went and heard him speak, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, I just love Mark Batterson, the way yeah, he writes. Awesome. He, yeah. And I also love how he teaches, but 
Um, he's just a quirky, nerdy yeah. guy. And I mean, talk about a guy who like the stories he tells in his book are just yeah. where he finds these stories. Mm-hmm. I have no idea, but he he tells a story like nobody. Yeah. He's just so good and at it. And he finds even the most obscure stories from the Bible he that does. you're like, I didn't even know that person existed. And writes a whole book on <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just so, so great. And he, he writes a book a year, just uh-huh. about like that's kind of his goal. Mm-hmm. So if you're looking for books to read, really anything by Mark Batterson yeah. is yeah. worth reading. But Circle Maker is so great because it's kind of this story of how he just drew a circle around Started this book. A prayer, prayer walking around yeah. a piece of land on Capitol Hill. Yeah. Yep. And now he's like seeing those prayers come to fruition. Yeah. But he also has talked about like drawing cer- – he's come out with books that are like spinoffs of that around yes. like your family and your yeah. kids and so, yeah. stuff like that's, that. That's my whole – you know, yeah. I get cynical with that right. kind yeah. of stuff because, you know, it sells well. So I guarantee you the publisher is like, any other circles we, we can draw? Right. What circles? <laughs> what yeah. circles? It's like yeah. the five love languages <laughs> yes. of my teen, of my kid, of my dog, yeah. of my – you know, it just goes on and on because yeah. they're selling. Let's keep writing. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> But yeah, well, so that's, I mean, but it's not. But you should be praying around those things <laughs> yeah. too. So, I mean, yeah, there is but a, can't we take that book part. and draw a circle and a around anything? Yeah, I, think, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Some people need chapters. that kind of hand holding. <laughs> do you they? Know, it's do hard they? To, or does the yeah. publisher uh, just need another book both. out there? It's yeah. both. Yeah. Um, but you, you also like as you were talking about that, that led you into kind of how you've um, you got the vision for. Yeah where we're at now and the 100%. land that we're sitting on. Yep. And so it was kind of this domino effect of yep. like Circle Maker. We went through Sun Stand Still yep. um, by Furtick. And then you went to this Tennessee prayer event. Yeah. And I know you shared the story yesterday, yeah. but some of our listeners might not have heard it. And yeah. I've heard it a million times and I love hearing it. So yeah, I was you trying, you know, it? I know I still have the email that I sent, but I can't find it. I was looking for oh, it before that I'll have message. To look so for mine. I really need to find it and put it in a Word document yeah. so I don't lose it. Um, so the prayer event, I, I don't remember what it was called, but it was at a church called like The Gathering or something yeah. like that was the name of the church. Because we went the following year too. Yeah. Uh, but and it, they before. only did it for a few years. Mm-hmm this event, and I still to this day don't quite get what they, how they did what they did. So I remember how I found out about it. We went to a New Spring conference, mm-hmm. and they had a table set up. And so I went by the table, and they were given information out about this prayer retreat thing leading up to Easter. And it was like that next, it was a few months away from then. And it was all in, like, it, it was free, and all the meals were free. Like, everything about it was free. You just had to show up. And so I was like, I mean, free. I'll, <laughs> I'll go. And um, and the other thing was, like, the names of the people that were going to be there. So, big names. Like, big names. Uh, it was Furtick, but it was also um, – uh, what's the the Jensen pa- Franklin? Was no, it was the pastor in Texas who slept on the roof of his church. Oh, oh yeah. Um, oh man, I'm drawing a blank. Young, Ed yeah, Young. Ed, Ed, Young. Ed Young nice. Jr. Yeah, he was there. I want to get that. And that talk was wild. That guy, yeah. that guy's <laughs> something. Um, but yeah, so they had like these big names that were showing up for this very little event. I mean, it. I said 300 pastors. It may have been 300 pastors. Yeah. It, it might have been closer to 150. It was not a, it's not a big church, not a big uh, showing, um, and they treated us like celebrities while we were there. I don't know how they pulled this <laughs> thing off, um, but uh, one of the evenings, Stephen Furtick was doing a talk on prayer and closes out his thing by having all the pastors kind of stand where they are and leads us in this prayer thing. And he starts saying, you know, God's given you a dream for your church. Um, and, you know, you've been afraid to speak it because you've been afraid that, you know, if you say it out loud and, you know, it's too intimidating and it seems too daunting and maybe people will laugh at the dream that you have for your church, but, God is wanting you to speak out loud the dream he has given you for your church. And um, so, you know, just start praying out loud, you know, speak the the dream that God has given you for your church. And I just remember thinking, 
this is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> and um, and classic Furtick, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm just like, I am not playing along. I'm not getting mani – like, you have to know like a bit of my story. Yeah. Yeah. I you hate the whole manipulation <laughs> right. altar call thing. Like I was – backstory, I was at a – at a college chapel one time where they start giving a an altar call and it's like you know first it's like you're called to missions kind of thing and i had already prayed a prayer of commitment to missions so like i'm like i'm not going forward because i've already done that you know then it's like if you love Jesus, if you love oxygen, you know, like it's like they're every, if you're hungry. I mean, by the we just need to have everyone yeah, up here. By right the now. time we're done, it's like the whole school is at the altar except for me and like two other rebels, you know. And I'm like, moving. there's no way I'm going forward. I don't at this point. I don't care what he says. I'm not leaving yeah. my seat, you know. So that's that's how I'm wired. So like. Furtick's doing this thing, and I'm like, this is so stupid. I am not playing along. And then I just genuinely felt convicted. I mean, it had been a great couple of days at this thing, and I, I felt so grateful to, to be there, and so much of it was so rich and so good. So I just felt convicted. I felt like if God brought me to this thing, who am I to say – this part's not for me. Mm -hmm. mm. So I just started praying. And honestly, like the whole vision thing, that's another, that's a whole nother thing. Like I've never been the Moses on the mountain. Mm. Here's, you know, download the dream and, and go do the thing. That's never been me. So like, um, you know, I know pastors who every year they do, you know, two weeks of vision talks, right. you know, and that's just never been me. Like, um, what's, what's my dream for believers to do more of what we're doing? You know, yeah. that's, that's my dream. And, um, to reach more people, that's my dream. It's, it's not even like a change of direction. It's just, you know, yeah, I, we need to do more. Like mm -hmm. we need to reach more. That's, that's the dream. Like, it's just always been that for me. So I start praying out loud and, I don't even remember where we were at at the time, but I think we had two services, but like probably barely, like barely yeah. needed to, you know. And um, I just start praying, and I, I don't even know where it came from. I just start praying, and oh, one of the, and I know this was probably part of it. Um, Bill, um, the guy who does the talks, he's also in Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, he had a book called uh, Go Big, and his whole thing was like ad services. It, like his church had, I don't even know how many services at however many yeah. different locations, and he's like, they're all like twenty five percent full. We had services uh -huh. just to reach people, you know. Like he was, he was the one that was like, pick a date on the calendar. Yeah, that's and when add we a went service. back the next year. Yeah, we all heard that. Yeah, was so like, oh, we're doing. He, he was at services. that thing, and it was <laughs> like that was part of it. So I was like, yeah. Like we need to add a service and we're going to grow and we're going to outgrow our place and we're going to need to start looking for 10 acres of land and we're going to need to do all these things. And I like I was overwhelmed. I get back to the hotel and I'm thinking I can't just go to bed. I got to. And I'm there by myself, so like, there's no accountability. I could have done that whole thing and just gone to bed <laughs> and not told a soul, but mm -hmm. I felt very compelled. Like, I need to send an email and I need to like get this out there in writing that this is what I sense God is saying. And so I just typed out the whole thing in an email. I sent it to elders and staff and um, said like, this is what I th think God is calling us to do, and sent it out. And it started a I mean, it did start a thing. Like we we did add a service, and we did start to grow. And then we added another service, and then we paved the last blade of grass, and then we started looking for land, and we ended up buying uh, six and a half acres of land, mm -hmm. not ten. But then a year later, we bought three and uh -huh. a half more, and so now we have you know the full ten acres, and like every like it was crazy. Like everything that God had kind of downloaded into my head happened, and. Yeah, I, I I can't replicate it. It's never happened again. You know, like it's just it was crazy. It was a yeah. it was a remarkable God experience uh that I'm very grateful yeah. to have
been a part of. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think it probably had to bring you a little bit of confidence just in your prayers because you send the email, and I remember you mm-hmm. sent it to staff and elders, so we all read it by ourselves because yep. we weren't like at work or anything. Yeah, it was late at night. <laughs> yeah, then, I was at in a hotel. Uh, I don't know how much longer it was, but I remember it we was all, right before Easter. Yeah, we Easter. all met in what was our like bookstore or uh-huh. whatever you want to call it that ended up becoming Treehouse in the yeah. years to come. We met in there with elders and we prayed over it and nobody, there was not one person in the room that was like, mm-hmm. no, this isn't what we shouldn't do. This yep. is yeah. not right. Like there was just such agreement across the board, yep. which I think speaks to when God's yeah. calling you to something mm-hmm. too. It's not just, it doesn't, it isn't just you. Like there is agreement across the yep. board with stuff. Yeah. 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 That was such a great, it's so great to like look back on that. Yeah, and I've I, had I've had a handful of those moments. I had a I had a moment like that uh, when I was in New York one time uh, visiting my dad. A typical visit my dad story. I go to visit my dad because I don't see him much, and I go there, and he's like, "All right, I'll, he's um, working the <laughs> I'll see you tonight at seven. <laughs> I've got you know ten appointments during the day, <laughs> so I like drive all the way up there. He's gone all day, so I go to the library of the college that I attended, and that was when I was I was in coaching with Nelson at the time, and I just had this yellow pad moment of what we were going to do with staff. And that that's what ended up leading to Sam coming on board mm-hmm. and rearranging how mm-hmm. we were staffing and all that kind of stuff. And it was another one of those moments. Like, I just knew that I knew yeah. that I knew. Like, God just downloaded this thing into my head. And it doesn't happen very often. Right. But, man, when it happens, it's like, here we go, full steam. Yeah, and I think that's what I like about looking back at those things yeah. is – Especially looking at them when we're in like the tough moments. Yep. Because it's like, no, like this was. This, yeah, this was, isn't about us. Right. Mm-hmm. It's right. not about us. And it was something that like we're just, we're just here for the ride yep. to like let the Lord use us in those yep. things. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And like he's going to work out all the other details because yep. we've already seen his faithfulness in yep. all these other areas. Yep, for yeah, for sure. So you ta- you mentioned the elders because you sent them this yeah. um, thing, and we're going to talk a little bit yep. about um, some of the ways our elders pray for people. But I thought it would be great to just take a little bit of yeah. a mini rabbit trail here about the elders because we don't talk about them a ton around here, yeah. but they're really like significant they players are. behind the scenes. And they are a behind the scenes. So like when people say like, why yeah. don't you you know pray the elders out on stage and whatever. That's just not, that's not the role. Yeah. So, right. um, you know, I don't, I don't. No one on our elder team is clamoring for more. Right. You know, um, we pick our, we choose. There's a whole process for our elders, um, but the starting point of the process is who in our church is functioning like an elder. Right. So They're we don't we leading. don't appoint elders. It's who who's leading. Who's who's faithful, who's generous, who's, um, you know, taking responsibility. And we look for those people and invite them into this process to go through um, an elder training. And so typically, you know, they're leading an area of ministry, they're leading a a B group, um, they're consistently generous, they're faithfully here, um, they're they're people of remarkable faith and... um, yeah, just the and and the role that they play. So you know, our church, uh, our staff leads ministry because every staff member is overseeing an area of ministry. So it makes sense. They've been hired to and empowered to lead their areas of ministry, and um, so we're kind of staff uh, led. Um, but then our elders give. The way I the way I define it is our elders are really a policy making board. So it's doctrine and policies that establish a boundary. And if you think this might seem like a not great analogy, but I like it. <laughs> um, it's like the 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 boundaries of the playground and the playground within those boundaries. Staff can do whatever they want to do. Like they have free reign to lead their areas of ministry they just can't go outside of these boundaries and that's kind of the role of the elders and uh, they also are um, 
in some ways kind of my sounding board. Uh, I'm I'm one of the elders, and they're the they're the team of people that I confide in, um, solicit prayers from. Um, they offer accountability for you. They offer accountability for me if I'm struggling with uh, a decision about something. Oftentimes, I mean, I have the directional team on staff, but like if it's a staffing thing that I'm kind of struggling with, uh, I will often take it in there and just say, you know, here's what's going on. Um, and most of them have a great leadership experience outside of the church also, so they're able to share their wisdom with me. Uh, it's just a great team of people. Um and we have um, between, I don't know, six and eight, six and nine, I can't remember what our bylaws say the, the, the parameters are supposed to be. Um, so they serve kind of on a th- three-year on, one-year mm-hmm. off rotation. That's a little bit in flux at the moment. Um, but they serve in one-year terms and roll off occasionally. So that part's solid. Um, and right now it's Robin Orr, Greg Lamont, Jason Judy, Nate Stair, Amanda Burbage, and Kelly Rutherford. And um, yeah, they're just such a – I mean, this this particular team, we've been – they we start a new year in January. So our ministry year starts in September, but our, our elders roll on calendar years. And um, so we're, you know, three months this month in, and um, I'm so – I'm so grateful. It's such a great group of people, and um, yeah, the the times that we that we pray over folks, like they just. I've been in meetings in other settings with some of our elders, like that aren't elder type meetings, mm-hmm. and I'll just say, and that's one of our elders, and yeah. that's why I'm yeah. so incredibly right. grateful that they're serving in the role that they're serving in, because it's just such a great group of folks this, that we have all the time, but right. this this right, year right. Is, is especially sweet. So, yeah, one of the roles is that um, that you mentioned yesterday is that they do pray over people. Yes. And um, you mentioned the James 5 verse that's kind of before that about, like, if you're sick, come to the elders. Yep. That's You guys are just obedient in doing yep. that. That's something that we've been practicing around here for a long time. Yep. But the next verse says... Um, the earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Yeah. So I'm just curious, mm. what are some wonderful results that you guys have seen from prayer in your own lives or in the lives of others? Yeah, I mean, I shared, you know, one of the elder things yesterday, mm-hmm. the the lady that had the brain tumor that vanished. Uh, we've had we've had other similar mm-hmm. stories. Uh, I I often tell people who are seeking our prayers for that is no matter what happens, God shows up in, mm-hmm. in significant ways right. in those in those times, regardless whether the person's healed or not. Uh, if for no other reason they know that they've got a group, they've got a church family mm-hmm. that's standing with them in prayer, and there's there's some peace that comes from that solidarity of knowing I'm not in this alone. Yeah. And uh, so even if it's just the gift of I've got people standing mm-hmm. with me, it's always uh, it's always such a uh, special yeah. time to to stand around and pray. Yeah, I wish everybody could experience that because it is like it's a great example of yeah. how to pray. Yeah, I mean we're not we're not sitting there telling God what to do. We're yeah. at, we're asking, we're petitioning yeah. for this person, yep. right? So. That's amazing. Yeah. I'll... Yeah. And the and the next time that's available is at our Good Friday. I know we're right. going to talk about that later, yeah. but the elders and our pastors will be available to pray over people mm-hmm. during that. So if, you know, if that's something that you're seeking, you can do that at that service. Otherwise, like just generally speaking, uh, you can just email me and um, make a request yeah. and I'll I I get it. Jimmy, you said it not too long ago, but I think it was when you were in college, you and a friend, yeah, you would pray together and you'd write down your prayers. Yeah, that and was then you'd I go said back. that in the message yesterday, yeah. Louis Zanino. Yeah, that's what it was. And you would yeah. go back and you would I remembered his name because it sounded awesome. Yeah. Um and you would like check mark like how to God. Yep. I just think that's such a great practice to put yeah. into play. Because yeah. we were just talking the last time we did that at a good it might have been Good Friday or was a night of worship when we prayed over people. Yep. Like people came through and I remember like 
times after that, hearing people that we prayed over, that we anointed, that yep. were like sharing what happened and how yep. God showed yeah. up. And I just think so often we throw out little prayers yeah. and then we forget like how God showed up in that. So even that question, I'm like, well, I'm trying to think of like a really big thing. There's humongous things like yeah. praying for kids and praying to have kids and then praying for them and, mm-hmm. and where they're going to go and then life decisions and all those things. Sure. But like it's those little things that people come through that like it was just heavy on my heart that week and you pray for them. And it was answered. It was answered, yeah. but then you just move on. You're like, yeah. yeah. I mean, so it's just, yeah, it's to interesting. Yeah, to keep it in mind. No, yeah. It'd be great. Yeah, I reached out to Louis leading up you to did. the. Yeah, because I hadn't talked to Louis in a long time. Yeah. And um, I know he's pastor in, in Pennsylvania and has been almost since uh, college was over. I don't know if he's been at the same church the entire time, but he's just such a, a great guy. He and his wife both. Um, so I reached out to him and said, hey, Louis, I'm teaching on prayer this week using you as an example. Uh, those were just great times. And he said, crazy enough, I'm preaching on prayer this oh, week too. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was good to make a connection with Louie. Yeah. I love, yeah, I just think over times in my life where I've seen, like, some big prayers answered, and I've talked about them before, but, like, my sister's transplant yeah, mm-hmm. sure. was a time that, like, yeah, just really grew our whole family. I think even our church's prayer life, um, there was some other things going on in our church around that same time too. And we had a couple of these prayer type events. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Carissa was one that was just a part of all of that. And I think like the challenging prayer in that, that we have taught, I was, I was blogging all during that time. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that was difficult with Sis's transplant, she had a liver transplant, was that she had to have a full liver. So we knew that it was going to come from an organ donor. And just having to like not only be praying that this would happen so that my sister could live was also this reality that someone was going to lose a family member. Mm-hmm. So that was just like a really... Yeah. Um, yeah, just a, a it's paradox. tough to know what, yes. to, yeah, what do you pray yeah. for. Yeah, it's like, yeah, like, are we praying for this right? And so, like, even in that surrendering to, I don't know how to pray for this mm-hmm. in a way that's doesn't feel really selfish. Yeah. And so just learning, walking yep. with Jesus through that. And then years ago, Nate was a part of a missions trip that we've shared here before, yeah. too, and... Um, I believe that prayer saved Nate's life and the yeah. life of a lot of the guys that were with him yeah. um, on that trip. And yeah, so we can experience these things like I've experienced personally. I know you guys have. We've experienced collectively. But it's not always that amazing. Like right. no. prayer doesn't always get those kinds of answers. Nope. And so some of the other words that you mentioned were skeptical and disappointing. Yeah. So before we get to disappointing, because I think that's where like a lot of us can sit um, with the the idea of prayer, I I do want to touch on the skeptical just a little bit. Um, So can you talk a little bit more about like why would someone be a skeptic? Like what, what are some of the things that happen in our culture, in our churches that Mm -hmm. cause people to just not buy into this thing? I mean, I think the the main thing is just, um, yeah, the things that you're praying for, would they have just occurred naturally anyway? Right. I mean, isn't that the, that's kind of the big thing. Like, do you really need God to intervene on that or would it have just happened anyhow? Like you're mm-hmm. praying for charisma. How many people who don't pray get a liver, get a liver transplant, <laughs> right. you know, bunches of them, mm-hmm. I'm sure. And, um, yeah, so that's the thing. Like, yeah, was that an answer to prayer or was it just a natural, naturally occurring event that took place? And and the true answer is we don't really know. Like, mm-hmm. there's that's the mystery of what prayer is. You know, um, Nate's in Mexico and someone gets an urge to pray and calls together some friends and they pray for their safety, not knowing what's going on. I mean, it's a, it's a remarkable story and it happened at the time. Mm-hmm. And, but, you know, Earl was talking his way you know, <laughs> right. out of that. Could Earl just be like quick on his feet? We know, we yes. know that he was, you know, so like, could it have just been that? I mean, I don't know. So right. that's the, that's the great mystery. Like you can't really confirm. And I've even read, you know, I've read the studies 
where they do studies in hospitals about people who pray and people who don't and the outcomes and is it different and you know people try to to verify yeah. the the supernatural aspect of what prayer is it's just really hard to yeah. to do so you know there's there's that level of skepticism and then you see the crazy you know like on TV uh, I'll never forget like the Benny Hinn stuff, you right. know, where he just blows on people and they're all falling over because, mm. you know, OK, you watch that and you're just like, what a bunch of what right. a bunch of hooey, you know, yeah. there's no way that's real. And I mean, I can be a cynic. So right. I watch some of that stuff and I'm like, yeah, I yeah, you I wake up. Either. I mean, you catch me on a bad morning and I'm a huge skeptic like you have. You just right. I mean, I think that's part of the faith. Aspect I mean, have we too. been on the moon? That's what I'm saying. I mean, <laughs> let's throw some conspiracies Jeepers. out there. Why? Right. And then where does that land us? <laughs> right. Not on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Prayer. I, I agree with all that. Like if, but I, I guess for me in my heart, maybe this is simple and maybe this, my relationship is like, I don't want to know. I don't want to leave it to change. Like I want to leave yeah. it to God. So yeah. it's that whole thing of like, we're not praying for the outcome. We're praying for God to show up in yeah, it, right? That's it. And I think that's what's backwards sometimes. Is like obviously, obviously we were praying that Nate would be safe or that you know Carissa would would have a liver. But ultimately, we're praying that God just shows mm -hmm. up in it, however yeah. it is. You right. were praying that for the family right. of whoever lost their lives for that, right? So I think like shifting just that little bit builds my faith more. Of like yeah. I'm not, I'm just praying for God to show up and and have to be okay with whichever way that is. And yeah. I think that takes some of the cynic cynicism mm -hmm. out of it. Job. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the headphones, I don't, sometimes I don't know if the uh, words yeah. that I'm pronouncing right. are correct yeah. or not. That's what They're probably is. not right. So, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's that mindset. Yeah. Well, you shared um, our very favorite commandment around yes, here, which is commandment. the 11th commandment, thou shalt keep it real. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, Disappointment is the word that I think all of us can resonate with from yeah. one time or another. Um, and I know this is like a super vulnerable ask, and you shared I some did. big stories yesterday. But um, would you be willing, either one of you, to share a time when you've just been disappointed by the mm -hmm. outcome of your prayers? You already shared. Um, I did. I, I shared yeah, a bunch. I, so, <laughs> and there's a bunch more. Yeah, I know. I know there's a lot. Um, when I think about that, I think it's more probably around my prayers. Like, it's so hard to say that because we've been so blessed. Like, I've mm -hmm. been so blessed yeah. in life, too. Like, and I think everybody could say that by certain sure. aspects. There's been really, really difficult seasons. But I think it's like not restored relationships mm. that like you've prayed for. Um, if that's family or if that's that's friends or people that you thought were friends. Mm -hmm. I think church life, too. Like, that's that's probably for me personally as real as it can get. It's like you, you thought you had relationships and a decision you made or a thing that you were trying to do and that destroys a relationship. Like mm -hmm. that's just weird. It's just weird to me when you both love Jesus. So I think those prayers that, that go maybe unanswered in my brain. Um, yeah, that's probably the most difficult when I think back to it. Um, cause I mean, we've prayed for people that have been sick and like, obviously mm -hmm. you want them to live, those are really difficult prayers as well when, yeah. when it doesn't, when it's not answered in that way. So there's a lot. Yeah. Jamie, I think we were talking about it even at lunch with Jamie yesterday um, at Discovery X. Just your vulnerability from stage yesterday with all of the stories yeah. that you shared really just left. I think it just set the tone for mm -hmm. this series and that like we can it's okay to struggle through this thing For sure. and to be disappointed, like to be disappointed yep. when the thing that we've been praying for isn't answered. Yep. Um, I know for uh, for us, probably one of our biggest disappointments was during a miscarriage that was like, it, we knew it was coming and it was like kind of a long lasting process mm -hmm. and just praying through it that God would stop it, yeah. you know, that, that this would just be... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then also like we just I had very difficult pregnancies. So our yeah. kind of when we got married it was like, yeah, we're going to have like four kids. It's going to be awesome. And again, like you were saying, like so blessed with our two boys, right. but like the end of that for us was like after Trey, I couldn't I was told I can't have more kids. So mm -hmm. like that that was just 
one of those dreams. I think yeah. that's you feel like your dreams die yeah. in those yeah. when you're in those places. And I know yeah. a lot of people struggle in that. Yeah. But I think like even with you talking about Derek yeah. and um, the ear infections and the commitment of time that we we give to praying over something, um, it can help us get through things, but it can also be exhausting. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah that, I mean, that time with Derek, I, you know, I get emotional around it when I talk about it. I just remember it so vividly. And, and I think one of the reasons I get emotional around it, um, at the same time we were, um, in the process of raising support to go to France. And that was another one of those things that like we just prayed and prayed and prayed around that thing. And um, I mean, it eventually happened and it mm-hmm. happened borderline miraculously that we got the support we needed to go to France. But after seven years of praying, and I think that's part of even why the Derek thing was is so emotional because that season that I was in, I just like, here I'm trying to do something, like in my mind, I'm trying to do something for God, <laughs> right. and God is nowhere to be yeah. found. Yeah. A little help here. Yeah. yeah. It Good was drought. It was <laughs> yeah. um, just one of the most difficult seasons. And when I say season, I mean a seven-year season that I've ever been in to this day. It still uh, ranks right up there as one of the most difficult uh, seasons of my life, and um, you know, and I think about it, and that's twenty percent of my married life with <laughs> Bonnie. That's you know, seven years, um, and yeah, it just it marked me, and it, uh, as I said yesterday, like it definitely impacted my view of prayer. But I, I think, like, I, it took me a long time to recover even my view of who God is and mm-hmm. all of that, and maybe it caused me to kind of reframe some of my understanding of yeah. who God is. But I think that's really good because like we all have our own experiences. So remember that. Like when you're when you are talking with somebody and they may seem cynical and they like you just don't know what they've experienced yeah. that mm-hmm. for sure. Of what they've prayed about. You just said that like yeah, even so even atheists pray at certain points, yep. right? Yeah. So you just don't know what they've asked God for and you don't know where they're at. So yep. to just like be like, why are you cynical? Like yeah. God's mm-hmm. still on the throne. But it's like sometimes that doesn't just work for everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, you shared an awesome quote from theologian Jonathan Edwards. Yeah. He says, when God is about to do a mighty new thing, he always sets his people praying. Yeah. So what new thing do you feel hmm. God is stirring at believers? Uh, so I talked about this earlier, you know, like, you know, what is the, you know, is this the vision thing as I think it was uh the first George Bush said famously or infamously, uh, the vision thing. Um, I thought it was strategery. Yeah, no, that was that was W. Oh, was, okay. Yeah. Um, but part of it for me is, you know, while so much of what the vision was in Sevierville, Tennessee, um, has been realized, not all of it has been. Mm-hmm. And so, like, for me, I think, like, we have not come close, in my opinion, to reaching our full redemptive potential. And, you know, we have room to grow. We have room to expand. Uh, I talk I talk about this in Discovery Experience, and it it's kind of where I, I guess I would answer that. And I said yesterday, um, like, there's so many churches in our community that if we were all doing what God had called us to do, like, our community would be transformed. It would not be, like, I passed five churches on my way to church, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And if every one of those churches was making a difference, how different would our community be? But the reality is we're not. And and even believers, like great things are happening at believers, great things happen through believers, um, but there's more. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I would love, you know, for believers to just kind of lead the charge in being the difference maker of our community. And you know, God's placed us in a strategic location between wealthy and and not, and um, this could be the the centerpiece of God doing something really remarkable in this community. 
And that's my prayer, you know, that, um, that you know, instead of, you know, a, a $60,000 grocery giveaway, you know, there's, there's a time where people just know that this is the place that we don't, that people just come to this place because they know this is the place where they're going to find hope and healing and restoration. And, um, you know, I, I also talk in Discovery Experience about, you know, I, my dream for believers is that it be the church that reaches a family like the like my family. And my church, my family was not reached. In fact, my family, worse than that, my family felt put out by church when troubles came. When alcoholism and adultery invaded my family, um, the church sort of kicked us to the curb. Mm. Like we weren't, they didn't want that kind of mess in their church. And I want believers to be the place where if you have a mess, you just come here to find hope, healing, and restoration. Yeah. So good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I mean, that's that's the boss right there. <laughs> <laughs> I stand behind that, yeah. yes. <laughs> so you said, I think that prayer is intended to be relational and real. It's not intended to be rote and religious. Yes. And you kind of were talking about that leading into sharing the big idea for the day. Which I just love. Yeah. It's a so, great quote out of the book. Yes. <laughs> pray as I can and don't try to pray as I can't. Yeah. So how can we put, practically speaking, put that into practice? Well, I mean, par- part of it is just, you know, just being real. Like, not, don't, don't pray as a religious person. Like, I've I've made the jokes like you shouldn't analyze people's prayers. That's a terrible thing to do. But <laughs> I've done a lot of that through the years, <laughs> you know, where someone's praying and you're just like, who is this? Yeah. Like your conversation with them, it doesn't sound anything doesn't like sound that. Anything and then you like, start praying and you're like, yeah, did different... someone did someone body snatch this person I was just yeah. talking to? Um, yeah, like let's just be real in our prayers and um and then, like, just pray where you are. I got a I got a great message from someone early this morning that uh, was res- just talking about how they so resonated with the message yesterday, and and how and and it's a person who just I think just exudes Jesus in such incredible ways and leads a group that has a lot of focus on prayer. And he said, you know, like. Yeah, the the part of praying for something for years and not seeing any movement, that is so me, you know. And so this morning I prayed again, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And that's just – that's what I mean. Like don't try to pretend like, oh, yeah, I pray and God, you know, moves. Just be as real as you can. Like, yeah, I pray for something and dang it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. God hasn't showed up in years. And and yet what else am I going to do? I'm just – where else can I go? I got to keep praying. Yeah. So just yeah, that um, mm. pray as you can. Like don't try to, don't try to perform to someone else's standard. Just embrace where you are and let that be enough. And see if God doesn't show up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I think if we would all do that, like wouldn't it be amazing? And I, you know. This believers is not going to be a praying kind of church because the pastor here is such a prayer warrior. Mm-hmm. But wouldn't it be something if we became a church that just prayed as we could, you know, and yeah. everyone in our church prayed as they could um, instead of not wading into it because they're afraid or they've been disappointed in the past mm-hmm. or they're cynical. Yeah. But yeah. everyone just said, you know what, I'm going to just pray today the best I can. Yeah. And yep. if all of us did that, man, what mm-hmm. new thing would God do? Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. My last thing on that is just one of my favorite things is when someone starts serving or for whatever reason you, you fall into a prayer group or a prayer circle with somebody who's said for years, I don't pray in public. I don't pray in public, all those things. And then they feel the Holy Spirit and they pray and it's choppy and it's a little messy, yep. but it's amazing. Like it's ama- I, I love that. It, it always refocuses me of yep. not just saying the normal catchphrases yep. and the things that you need to talk about in a prayer. It's just real. And it's, man, I just, we need more. We need yeah. more of that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. 
I loved that you mentioned um, that you found some richness in liturgical prayers yeah. as a Lutheran girl. I know. <laughs> um, and that, that happened because my uncle, who's Episcopalian, I got to know his priest, um, I mean, relatively well during the course of the passing of my aunt. And he gave me um, the prayer book that they mm-hmm. use in the Episcopal Church. And um, my counselor is Anglican, and which is a branch of the Episcopalians. Yeah. And so I was talking with him about it, too. And um, he directed me to a handful of prayers at one point. And, yeah, there's just something yeah, like the 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 prayer book thing was written hundreds of hundreds years of ago. Hundreds of years ago, yeah. And how do you not find some richness yeah. in that? You know? I think there's like something about that. Like, yeah, we want we do want for our prayers to be relational and sure. real. I think that liturgy or even like the Lord's Prayer is another yeah. example of sure. that. Like Jesus gave that to his disciples as a model of like how to pray. Yeah. And so when you're in those spaces of like not knowing what to pray or not feeling like, you know, you're you're wanting to pray even, yeah. like to to turn to something like that, to a book of prayer or to even Psalms, just the Lord's yeah. Prayer and just like let that be your prayer for the day. And yeah. if that's all you can do, then that's, fine. Then that's all you can do. Yep. But there are things I think that there's some rich things yeah. that you can... Because what was the last quote you shared about um, to be uh, praying? To, you can't Richard, learn how to pray. The Richard Foster yeah. quote was, the gist of it was, um, you learn to pray by praying. Yeah. That was the gist of it. So you know? that's the thing. If you're if you're like, I don't even know what to say or how to yeah. say it, then just use some other prayers yep. that yeah. people have made yep. praise, available to you. Praise again. Yeah. So that's all we've got time for today. Goodness. But before we go... There are some like really great things that we have to make this series even more impactful for yep. you that are coming up. So first, we yesterday we gave out prayer journals because we ran out. And we ran out. And but the two of we're you tried to more. talk me into buying fewer. Well and I was like, let's I think just, we should let's let's call our people out a little bit on it, this. Yeah. It, we never know. We no, do some things true. sometimes where it, it people are, we think it's going to be a fabulous idea and nobody takes them and so we have things true. sitting around yeah. forever. Low it expectations. Yeah. So this time we were like, let's like Let, meet I, in the middle. And I was like, let's just buy buy more and we can give them away during the course well, of the I series. Well, I did buy that many more. I know. More. And then yeah. we still ran out. So. And then we still ran out, which is amazing. I love it. We'll have more this we week. We will have more on Sunday. Yeah. So make sure you grab a prayer journal if you unfortunately did not get one yesterday. We'll have more. Then we have the prayer wall. Yep. Which is getting filled up already. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Guys, a little less prayer. I got to do <laughs> a little grief. restructuring because... Okay, it's Some supposed people, to. It's yeah, supposed you to look, do, You're the pastor. Yeah. You lead okay. our people in this. I haven't please. seen it. Yet. Hear, hear, oh boy. <laughs> hear me, people. Come on, guys. The, it, the idea is, it's it's supposed to look like a stained glass window when we put the prayers all up there, right? People aren't connecting pieces. People are not. People are just randomly sticking them all over the place. Have you ever seen a stained glass window with holes all over it? A broken Nobody. one. Nobody. Yeah, a broken one. So I don't want to critique. The prayers, prayers of our people. Yeah, they're important. But could you put them next yeah, to another stop piece, being a mess. please? <laughs> Good grief. Uh, Heather's going to reconstruct it. Uh, yeah. We have to. I'm, I'm yeah. not building another one. Well, we're out of room because, <laughs> because I don't know who we're going to do that. they're all randomly everywhere. No, I, I'm going to put them together. I'll mash them and together. And then we'll see what we have. And we'll see what, how it's looking. We might if need not, a, we're just, no, just we, pray by the prayer wall. We might need another wall. <laughs> yeah. It, which is great. It is great. We will make as oh, many yeah. walls as we need. <laughs> A lot of wees coming over there. <laughs> I think I heard you uh, right. I uh, was. Oh, speaking of Lee. Oh, you do have you did the acrylic. So You're Lee right. helped to construct the prayer wall. A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> Off of my cues. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Um, according to Lee, and I'm calling him out because I know oh, he doesn't gosh. listen to the podcast. <laughs> Um, he does listen. Uh, he's not listening. Nah, he, an hour and 20 minutes, he is not Lee, listening to this. If you're listening to this, um, <laughs> I will pat you on the back and say, <laughs> nice. way, to, way to go. Lunch on me. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> His lunches are $25. Yeah, true. I'm not doing that. Um, he 
apparently couldn't get anything else done this week because he built a prayer that wall. That was it, yeah. Yeah. Really? There's Nothing a there's else. a noise that's been happening in the auditorium oh, that was for a excuse. year. And he was like, I couldn't get I couldn't to it. Get I had to, to build it. a prayer wall. And right. I was like, Really? That took you 40 hours this week? Unbelievable. Yeah. All right. Unreal. So, uh, called all right. You need to talk so to his boss. <laughs> yeah, this right? prayer wall is going to be available all through the series, but it's also going to be one of our stations at our 24 hours of yes. prayer yep. event. Jamie, real quickly, what is that and how can someone get signed up? You can go to the events tab in the Believer's Church app and you just pick an hour on Thursday the 28th from 6 p.m. to Friday the 29th, 6 p.m., and you pick an hour and you show up in the gather room and you walk through the four stations that we'll have set up for you. There will be a prayer guide that walks you through all four stations and you pray for one hour. And, uh, yeah, you can sign up using that link in the app. And, man, we strongly encourage you to do it in person. If you choose to do it remotely, we'll still send you the prayer guide so yeah. that you can walk through that. And, man, I, I don't want to dis- – if that's what you want to do – uh, the more people praying, the better. Um, but there's something significant about being here on yeah. campus, I believe. If yeah. you haven't done it before, it's you will not it. regret yeah. doing it. And then that's going to lead us right into our Good Friday service, which we've talked about a little bit already. Yep. That's going to be a night of worship and healing and um, prayer and communion. Yep. So please make plans to join us at 7 o'clock in the auditorium for our Good Friday service. Yep. But that's it for today. Long, long podcast. Long Doug would have loved to be in here. Just bump that speed up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just put fast. it at 1.2. Now you tell him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> That's not going to work. All right. Work. We'll see you on campus at 9 or 1045 on Sunday as we continue our Pray series or join us on YouTube at 1 o'clock. Thanks for being here, friends. Go and be love.